Hey there, and welcome to The Knit Show. I'm Vicki Howell. Today, we are all about amigurumi, those cute little knit and crochet toys that we all love. We are gonna have Twinkie Chan, author and designer, in the house. Then we're gonna take a brief break and talk about the mindfulness of knitting with my friend, therapist, Chelsea DeCroif. Then we will be back in the studio with Crafty Is Cool's Allison Hoffman. First, though, we are going to meet today's Knit Hive. Hello, ladies. Hi. Hi. Hello, hello, hello. So first up, Taylor. Uh, Taylor is, well, an amazing designer, but we actually met randomly because you're the sister-in-law of my former neighbor, but way before you were doing this professionally. But then crochet taxidermy took off for you. Yes. How did that, I don't know that I've ever asked you, how did you choose that? Um, it was really random. I was making a little scarf that was a fox, like a dead fox, and then it just did not look right. The head didn't, so I ripped it off, put it on the table, Matt comes home, which is my husband, and he was like, girl, you gotta mount this. So I went out and got a wooden plaque and mounted it, and it just grew from there. And now you're known for it. You do all kinds of classes. You've got this book, and we even have one of your pieces hanging in our studio, yeah. so we have a little piece of you here. Do you think, um, when your baby's born, <laughs> there's gonna be all, all kinds of cute things hanging? I think there might be some. One yeah. or two, yeah. one or two. Well, I'm thrilled to have you here. Thank you. And then next is my mom, Libby. Do you remember, Mom, when we were little and um, I had a slumber party and you made every single girl a pajama bag that was like a doll face oh, and then crocheted? Yes, every, crocheted. That was a part, that was everybody as a party favor, because it was a pajama party, got a crocheted I'd forgotten oh, all about yeah, that. The little, uh, it was the 80s, so of course it was like, there was like a creepy doll face involved. But, but it was so sweet, yeah. I would, where are those? I totally for, had forgotten that yes. I'd made them, and probably when I moved from Colorado to California, I probably gave them away. Yeah, I have them. yeah, although I still have doll blankets that you taught me how to crochet from there, so who knows? But anyways, super fun. Yeah. Um, it might be at home in the garage. I don't know. Everything's at home in the garage. <laughs> well, you know, I always, my mom, fun fact, is also my best production stitcher. Um, unfortunately, she has a job and she's highly overqualified, but I really want her to just come and stitch for me. <laughs> I love having you here. Thanks, mom. Thank you, sweetie. I love it too. All right, next up is my daughter, Clover. Thank you, Clo Clo, for being here. You're welcome. So, Given what you chose to wear today, the outfit that you laid out for yourself, this is probably not gonna be a surprise, but will you tell everyone if you could have anything made from yarn, what would it be? Um, a cat picture made out of yarn. Like string art? I don't or, really know, but a cat picture made out of yarn. As long as like there's a cat in there and yarn involved, you're in? Yeah. Yeah? What do you, you're finger knitting, which makes me a little misty with pride. What do you, what do you think you're gonna make? Some kind of like, Choker or something? Oh, like a necklace? Mm -hmm. That's gonna be pretty sweet. All right, okay. well, keep keep on working, baby girl. Okay. All right. And next, we have a new friend, Carolyn. I'm so happy to have you here. Hi, thank you. So you mostly crochet lace, correct? Yes, I do. Is it just because it's a passion of yours or is there another reason? Uh, I, I love making them, um, but it's mostly for um, the hula halal that I belong to. Um, it's locally here in Austin. It's a traditional uh, hula dance school. Uh, we, don't, we don't have access to fresh flowers uh, here in Austin, so we end up making it, them sometimes. So when you're performing, is there a whole troop of people wearing crocheted lace? Sometimes. I love that you've mixed one old tradition with another old tradition and brought it to modern day. That's so cool. All right, ladies, well, how about you chill in the hive for a little while, do a little stitching, and I'm gonna go meet our first guest. My first guest in the studio today is crochet author and designer Twinkie Chan. Hello. Hi. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. You immediately brighten up the space, not just with, you know, this obviously, but just all of your, all of your crochet designs are so, happy and delightful. What what drew you to food and animals and other sort of like happy pieces? Um, I've always had this childhood nostalgia for vintage like plastic faux toys and sort of retro food advertisements that just, I don't know why I have just a really like happy association with it. So when I started uh, crocheting more in like 2005. I was like, I want to incorporate my love for food and my love for crochet Oh, like the together. fake, like the little plastic food that we played with. Like, yeah, has, oh, yeah, cute, yeah. yeah. Like your 
fake kitchen set sure. or whatever. So I just kind of want to meld those two things together. And um, by association, you know, Amigurumi is super cute and it just kind of really related to my work as well. I just really like uh, making people feel good and happy with my crochet. And you definitely do. Some of the displays that you've created for when you do, um, I guess when you're doing shows, craft shows or just displays in general, you get so creative with it. I've seen her, she has these big like buffets that she'll set out. She'll build like a stand and lay out. Like you had a sushi bar once and every single piece was crocheted. It was just amazing. Um, I just love, love, love it. And today we're going to be focused not on food, though. We're actually, um, this was a request from my daughter, Clover. We're going to be making a cat. And you are, it's actually going to be a cat loaf, which is a thing. No. It's kind of food-like. It's kind of, <laughs> kind of food-like. Um, so we're going to start from the beginning on how to make the head, right? Right. Okay. Let's get started. Okie doke. So with most uh, amigurumi, which has worked in the round, we need to start with a magic circle. And there are many different ways to a attack a magic circle. I'll just show you a way that makes sense to me. Okay. Um, so you hold the yarn with the tail toward the bottom of your hand and just wrap this yarn around your first two fingers and cross it over the top. And you pick up your crochet hook and stick it in the back here and hook your working yarn. And the loop is where you had your fingers. And then you just chain one to secure the loop. And to start, we're just basically crocheting a circle. And to okay. begin a circle, you work six single crochets into this loop. So a single crochet is insert your hook into the loop, yarn over, and pull through once, yarn over, and pull through both loops. And that's a single crochet. Oops, sorry. A little here. stuck. So you want to work six single crochet total into this first Ring. And the purpose of the magic circle, um, just in case you don't know at home, is if normal, another way to do it is to chain um, and make a ring, but you can't adjust the size of that ring. So often you'll get a hole, and that for something like this doesn't really work because the stuffing would come, would come, um, you know, through that hole. So this is a great like you'll see when she pulls it, it sucks it all in, which is so really magical. So you just magical. pull on the tail here. Yep. And just like magic. Look at that. Closes up. Yep. But if there is a hole, you can always sew through it later. That's sure, a good cheat sure. too. Yeah. So just to continue the circle, you're going to start increasing, and that's simply working two single crochets into the same stitch. So we're gonna. Sorry, I'm working a little tight <laughs> today, but so that's the one first single rounds crochet. Are always super tight. Yeah. Are you working in a spiral or in a circle? Um. Well, it's both. It's a circle worked in a spiral, which means we're not joining. You're not joining, that's what I mean. Right, right. Yeah, so we're just okay. continuing around. So you don't have to worry about the jog line that you sometimes get from the chain one. Correct, okay, you, you won't really see that. Perfect. Yeah. So you just keep increasing six times all the way around, and you can see we're starting to form a little circle here. And just so they can see, show them really slowly where you're inserting. She's inserting the hook through, or underneath both loops. Right, so you wanna make sure you're stitch. picking up both loops, and you see that there's a little V on top, which is where the stitch is. Mm -hmm. And so we're working two single crochets into each of those stitches. And then you're just gonna continue doing that. The pattern will tell you what ratio you at gradually, so that the piece lays fat, flat for a while, you um, spread your increases out, but using the exact same method. Right. And should we jump straight to head? Sure. So. At this point of the head, I use a piece of contrasting yarn as a stitch marker. It's just easier for me and I always have it laying around. And, um, but I'll probably take it out at this point so you can see what we're doing. So we're inserting the nose right in the center of that magic oh, okay, ring perfect. that we worked in the beginning. So that's a good place to put your nose. And I'm using safety noses, which are good for if you're making toys for children. So they'll be nice and secure and won't come out. And you can just find safety eyes and safety noses at your local craft store and online. Oh, this is the wrong <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is that what this little cone yeah. thing is? Yeah, it's got, it's got the go. little cone. I don't know why, but actually by my safety noses also on Etsy. There's a good range of safety facial oh, different, features. Oh, different features. Yeah. yeah, because the common one is just the plain Black, but there's, they have all kinds of great ones that have like eyelashes and different like expressions. Comic eyes. Yep. Yeah. So Super there's cute. your nose. And then I usually put my eyes like around round four on this project. And that's noted in the pattern as well. But 
before you secure them on, oops, no, let me, <laughs> thank you. You can sort of place them and move them around and see if you think it's cute. People will probably like different sizes of eyes, so you have options. So once those are in, come back on the inside and put the backs on. Thank you. And this is a great alternative to sewing buttons on um, or beads on, especially as Twinkie was saying, if you're giving um, this toy to a younger child because you don't have to worry about them chewing on it and choking. Make sure that tail is stuffed in there and then you're just gonna go ahead and stuff with polyester filling. And for this particular project, you don't have to stuff too tightly either. It's actually cuter, I think, if it's not super... Um, it has a little mushy. Yeah, it. it's a little mushy, especially when we get to the body. Like, the body has a better shape when it's less stuffed, I think. So yeah, don't worry about, like, cramming as much as you can, and this is gonna be cute, even it's at a It's already really cute. Yeah. Look at it. Look at the little yeah. face. So I'm going to get my hook back in here, and I use what we call an invisible decrease. So you need to decrease to start closing up the circle and to finish the head. An invisible decrease is you pick up just the outside loop of the stitch, and then you pick up just the outside loop of the next stitch, and you yarn over and pull through those first two loops, yarn over and pull through the last two loops, and then you've just decreased your stitch count. And you just keep following the pattern and decreasing until your head is finished. And then from there you start assembling. Correct. Okay. So you you close most of the hole or? We're closing the head all the way. I just feel like it's, it's easier to see what the shapes look like when they go together rather than just keeping a hole open in the head. Okay. And then to finish, before we draw all the stitches together, you just end with the slip stitch to join. And then we're going to trim the yarn. Give yourself about six to eight inches to work with. And to close up the last six stitches of the head, you're going to use your tapestry needle. Thank you. And how I close this up is I pick up the outside loops only, just the front loops of your stitch, and just weave through like this. And then pull to close, and that hole closes right up. And then I tie a small knot to secure. probably want to weave your tail through a couple stitches invisibly so it's hidden and secure and won't come out. And then I stick my needle through the toy. Just come out some random area. No one's going to see it anyway. And you give it a little tug and snip it and the tail disappears inside your project. So there's the finished head. Great. And so next all you would do is use that same seaming method, correct, to sew on so this so, body onto your head. Yeah, right? I would, when you're sewing your pieces together, I would pin them together first, just so there aren't any surprises. Just using regular pins, right? Yeah, just using straight sewing pins. Okay, so you would just pin them together and, and sew everything together. So now you know, thank you so much. This is super, super cute. Um, now you know everything to get started on this adorable cat loaf, but the complete instructions will be, of course, on our website, thenitshow.com. Thank you for being here, friend. Thank I love you it. So, so much. adorable. Next up, I sit down with therapist Chelsea DeCroif, and we talk about the mindfulness of knitting and crochet. I'm sitting here in the office of Chelsea DeCroif, who is a psychotherapist and also happens to be a knitter and one of my dearest friends. So thankful that you are having me in your space, in your workspace. Thank you for having me here. Absolutely. I want to, I've been thinking a lot lately about the health benefits of knitting and crochet. It's kind of a big, it's sort of in the zeitgeist of the creative community right now. The New York Times wrote an article not too far 
um, back ago. Uh, there's a whole council uh, that really is focused on stress relief. I think it's something regardless of what you do that you're probably focused on right now just because we're all such busy people. But I wanted to come to an actual expert and talk about what the benefits for mindfulness or just overall mental health that knitting and crochet or being creative might have. Sure, absolutely. So first, mindfulness is, uh, just to define it, is a present moment awareness of your experience as it arises without judgment. So you can see how that might fit into knitting as you're knitting one, purling two, you're paying attention to the pattern that you're using and hopefully not judging the moment as good or bad, right or wrong, but you're paying attention just to that moment. The benefits of mindfulness and being in that state are many. So there's lots of neuroscience that's been done on what happens to the brain when you're in this present moment. For one thing, the, the part of your brain, your corpus callosum, that connects your right and left hemispheres, gets thicker and denser. So you're able to go back and forth between both sides of your brain more readily. The fibers in your prefrontal cortex, which is uh, long-term uh, consequences, strategy, problem solving, that's the part of you that you have that allows you to play chess that like your cat doesn't, that makes you a little bit better at that and also the part of your brain that uh, allows for emotional regulation and empathy, so your ability to connect with other people. All of those parts of your brain grow. So the act of being mindful is something that changes the shape of your brain. We usually don't think of, we think of our brain as something static, and it's not. So just like you can do a workout and curl uh, a dumbbell and get your bicep to be bigger, the act of bringing your attention from the past or future, your grocery list, back to the present moment actually changes the structure and shape of your brain and allows you to calm better and allows you to reason better. So if you can use your knitting as a way to focus yourself in that moment, then you're going to do a lot for your brain. That's fantastic, and what I love about that is that for someone like me, I have a really hard time um, with meditation. Mm -hmm. I just am not there yet. But for me, if I can work with a pattern, I can kind of go in a zone that's as close as I get because it gives me something to do, something to fidget with as well. Absolutely, so you should, if you're, especially if you're a novice meditator and you want to make this part of your practice, you should choose a pattern that is just challenging enough to keep you engaged but not so challenging that it's gonna get you frustrated and get you to that judgment place to where you're, you're, you know, you're not quite calm. You might be a little upregulated from the whole thing, but not so easy that you zone out. So if you can do it and just kind of check out, that's not mindfulness. That's actually disassociation and that doesn't really do much for so, you. So I'm doing it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, yes, I'm zoning out. Fantastic. So. We should just basically knit on and stay calm. Absolutely. Thank Absolutely. you so much. Anytime. We are back in the studio, and my next guest is author of Amigurumi and Amigurumi Pets, Allison Hoffman. You can also find her on Crafty is Cool. Hello, hello. Hi, hey, Vicki. Thanks for having me. Of course, of course, you know, I mean, we've known each other for years. Mm -hmm. We both live in Austin. Right. Um, but really, over, gosh, this, the last several years, you've become known for creating all kinds of dolls that have the likeness of people. So you right. do superheroes uh -huh. and celebrities and other yeah. well-known people. I do. I make dolls of um, anybody that writes to me. I can pretty much make anyone you want. I make people's families and you did some holiday. People. You did some yes. holiday ornaments for some my ornaments. whole family uh -huh. and they were amazing. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I Thank love you. it. I love everything so, you do. So um, I made another doll today. I brought it's a little Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Wait, hold that because uh -huh. it's been a little chilly in the studio oh, lately. Oh, right. <laughs> She's chilly. She had her sweater. Wait, what? Perfect match. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And look. Okay, you're going to love this. Scooch out of the way for a sec. Oh, the heels. <laughs> <laughs> Those are amazing. Oh, my goodness. That's Thank so. Thank you. I'm honored. I really oh, am. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to have her chill with all of your other awesome props that you brought today. Mm -hmm. Even though you're really well known for likenesses of humans, we're actually going to be focused today, though, on one of your pets, right? Yes. From your yes. Amigurumi Pets book. Yes, I made the dolls uh, 
for Amiga Room Me, and it was all humans. And then I just really felt like I needed to do a book about our furry friends. And I've written Amiga Room Me Pets. There's all kinds of animals in it, from dogs and cats to um, horses and unicorns and sloths. And the sloths, which I love. <laughs> and I also love that you've done all of these different sizes in, oh, yeah. in them. Yeah. Is, is that just the same pattern? It's the exact same pattern. I've used different kinds of yarn. I used, I actually doubled a bulky strand of yarn for this one. There's um, worsted yarn, there's sport weight yarn, and then this tiny one is made with pearl cotton, so. So cute, so exact Tiny same hooks. pattern, exact but same you get pattern. a totally different, one could be a keychain yeah. and one can be a lovey, exactly. so cute. Yes. But we're gonna be focused on this little guy, mm -hmm. this size today. Yeah. What really sort of, I think, defines you and your work are your finishing details. It's what makes all of these pieces so special. So I would love it for this project that we, if we could really just focus on that. Thanks for that. You're welcome. All right, um, so yeah, that's my, actually my favorite part of making these because it, I mean, you go from a little boring, brown crocheted animal too. You know, you can add really a lot of personality and make them cute or mean or whatever. So um, I've crocheted the body of the sloth so far and you have to, you have to actually um, stop crocheting. I answered a stitch marker and then we're gonna add the face. There's felt pieces um, and then we're gonna use some safety. This is, these are, there's tons of them available online, all different sizes, colors, shapes you can get. You know, this is probably a cat nose, but you can get all kinds of different ones. Yeah. Um, and then some little eyes. There's, mm -hmm. again, there's tons of sizes of these and um, they just, you're gonna insert. I've already cut little slits in the In the felt, felt. so you snip those mm -hmm. and you're actually attaching the felt and the safety um, yeah. eyes and nose at the same time so yes. you don't have to pre-stitch them or anything. Right, you do this at the same time because you have to close it up and, um, let me see. So because gonna, it would be a little bit fussy to try and do this after. Uh, very, yes. You would have to use glue or something. I don't know how that would work, so. Um, and let me see. We're gonna put the eye through the tiny hole. All right, so this goes in each side. It's a little bit stiff. So you fuss with it a little bit and play with it, right. but you're gonna you're gonna attach the backs um, according to the manufacturer's pat. Um, yes, the washers. It's gonna be a tight fit because these are tiny. Right. So it is kind of so you struggle a little tedious, bit, but it, yeah, it's a little tedious. Bit. And, but you end up with this. Mm -hmm. So I've finished crocheting the body, and we've attached the eyes, the nose, and assembly comes next. Okay. I've done the I've done the arms. They're um, a little bit longer than the body, so when you position them, you're going to put them up here by the head. And really, it's just kind of a easy back and forth. It's nice to hide in the stitches because then you can't see all the. And you didn't stuff the arms. I didn't stuff the arms. Now for the larger slots, I definitely would stuff the arms. But when you stuff something this small, it tends to make it stand out from like, the body. Yeah, that would be cute. Yeah, so it just kind of makes it look a little more natural. So I would just um, finish this off. The same goes for the feet. They're um, tiny little feet, and they sew right onto the bottom. In so you would just position like that. sew it on uh -huh. in the exact same way. All right, so let's see how we do the mouth. Okay, we are going to use black embroidery floss. Um, embroidery floss comes in a strand of six plies. So for this, for this size, you don't need a really thick strand. I'm gonna take three plies of this six-stranded floss. And again, I mean, that's up to you. You can make it thicker or, and this happens a lot. Thank you, Vicki. There you go. All right. Not the end. And um, I, I feel like this is, this is something that, when I was beginning crocheting and making little toys and stuff, I wanted to know how to make the little faces. I always saw these cute little smiles. And I mean, a lot of times in patterns, it'll just say, so on. A, smile, embroider with a straight stitch or something. But it was hard for me to figure out. So um, the key is to keep the stitches nice and loose. You'll go up and the felt actually hides it. Okay, that'll be hidden later. Mm -hmm. um, I make a really loose V shape. And 
and then come out through the body and uh, it just makes a nice little Super cute. Smile. And you keep it loose so it doesn't pull down on the felt and cause it to bunch. Exactly. And also it makes it more of a rounded shape instead of a sharp V. And then I would knot this inside like so. Okay. Really cute. And then last up, why don't we see how you create one of the claws? Okay. So um, I would use, again, this is kind of a blunt tipped needle. If you use a sharp needle, it would split the yarn and um so i don't i don't like to so just a regular yarn. yarn needle right, right right so you're gonna come into one of the holes out through a stitch and um this is a three-toed sloth so <laughs> you're gonna do three claws and it's just a loose straight stitch you don't want these tight either because it will um pull the hand and You'll lose the definition. Right. Yeah. Okay. Just like that. Now, when you're finished, you would knot it and just tuck it right inside. All right. And so I noticed that your animals, that this particular project is a little fluffier than the actual yarn is. Do you have a tip for that? Yes. Actually, um, I like to make them fuzzy because it looks more like animal fur and it kind of hides the stitch definition which in a Mikurumi is fine to do. So um, I like to use a coarse bristle, bristled brush, um, or you can use a dog slicker brush for brushing dogs. Then I give it a back and forth motion, a couple of brushes like this, just all over the body. Makes fur. So cute, such a great touch. Thank you Thank so you. much, such a fun time, I loved it. Up next, I have even more tips for some Amigurumi success. <laughs> Whether you're knitting cute toys like these ones by my friend Nikki Epstein or crocheting any kind of item that you've seen from this show or any project that you love, I have a few just quick tips that might help for a little more success with your amigurumi making. So, common problem is toys can be lumpy and bumpy. And really, it's because the polyester stuffing can get really clumpy. So, before you stuff your stuffing, if you can just kind of shred it and break it apart, it'll really help for a more even um, piece. Also, if you're working with a larger yarn and you might have more open holes or your stuffing's white, but your, let's say your piece is black, you can just go get a nylon stocking that's the same color, stuff that first and fit it in. Speaking of larger holes, a lot of times that's super problematic because the stuffing comes out or you can see it. So a really easy tip is just go down a needle size or a hook size. Your holes will be tighter, the fabric will be firmer, and it'll be, be easier not to over or under stuff or at least for it not to appear that way. And then my last tip is toys often fall over because they just have a little bit of fluffing and there's not anything stable in them. So you can buy the plastic pellets that go in them, but why when you can just walk over to your kitchen pantry? Lentils like this, dried lentils or even beans will work. Just do a little bit of a handful at the bottom, add your stuffing, and your toys will sit upright. The bottom line, quick tips, fun toys, make for good making. All right, that's it for us today. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching and making some super cute toys with us. Thanks to my Knit Hive, my friends and my family for being here. Remember, all of the projects today and the patterns and links and all of the goodness that you saw in this episode and every episode in the series can be found at thenitshow.com. Be sure to tag at The Knit Show and at Vicki Howell, too, because we love to see the stuff that you're making. Tune in next time when we play around with mixed media for our multi-craftual episode. We will have Brooklyn Craft Company's Brett Barra and also Ra uh, Rachel Denbow from Smile and Wave. Until then, though, take some time to be creative, breathe in, knit out.